All right, today we're going to be looking at the world's second largest nickel deposit. Uh, and this is the Sudbury deposit or group of deposits um, in Ontario. And one of the really interesting things about this deposit is that it is thought to have occurred due to a meteor impact. Um, so we can see the geological map here. Um, and this is the outline of that former uh, impact crater. My cursor is going around. And you can see that it's not exactly crater shaped. Um, but this is because during the Grenville orogeny, which was a big mountain building event, it got squished. So it was once uh, more circular in formation and then it was squished. Uh, the pink we're looking at here is the Sudbury Igneous Complex. Um, and this is the rock that was melted uh, due to the impact. Um, during the impact, sulfur rich sediments were probably mixed in with this new molten rock. And it's that sulfur that grabbed the metals that formed uh, the nickel deposits in the area. So over the course of this video, uh, we'll have a look at some of the evidence to suggest that this is due to an impact event. Uh, and then we'll go through um, some of the different ore types that we have in Sudbury. Uh, all right, now we're looking at Google Maps or Google Earth image of the Sudbury area. Um, and you can see that this, where my cursor is going around, is uh, the approximate outline of the Sudbury um, igneous complex that we saw was the pink in the, the map before. Um, and we're going to have a look at um, a few different things. Um, we'll look at the fallback breccia. So this is the material that was blasted out by the uh, meteor impact and fell back on top, uh, which is as some of the evidence uh, that this is an impact site. Uh, then we'll go and have a look at the shatter cones. So this is in the basement and it's a it's one of the things that occurs uh, during impacts. There's cones uh, due to the shock wave uh, going through the uh, rock that's um, hit by the uh, by the meteor. And we'll also look at the Sudbury breccia. So this is material that was broken up uh, sort of at the base of the crater um, due to the meteor impact. All right, so we'll have a look first at the uh, Anaping fallback breccia. Um, this is uh, this is due to or to material that's fallen back down. It's actually quite a nice site to visit as well because it's a nice waterfall. Um, and then this is where the upcoming video is going to be from, where this point is here. Here I am at Anaping Falls, and one of the interesting things about this location, North Sudbury, is this is a really good location to see uh, the Anaping Fallback Retcha, where we have all these different flats in the rock that were formed uh, when a meteor hit here, and it blasted a whole bunch of material up into the sky, and then it fell back. Um, and that's why we call it a fallback retcha, it's due to a mini meteor impact. It can be distinguished because of the uh, fine grain matrix and all the other meteor pieces. Similarly, there were shatter cones found here, as well as um, tectite some distance away. It was this impact that resulted in the Sudbury nickel copper PGE deposits uh, that are mined to this day. So this is um, a piece of the Onaping formation from the Sudbury complex. And what it is, is it's a fallback uh, breccia due to the material that was thrown up when the meteor impacted and then fell back down and formed this tub. So we can see some larger class here um, that it's all very poorly sorted and that's from everything just being blasted up and fall down. But we can see some smaller ones here. So there's a little class there. Um, there's another one here that goes sort of like that. Uh, and then there's a number of small rock fragments that are making up this rock. Um, so yeah, we can see another one there, another one clearly there. And this is due to this material being thrown up and then falling back down. And this kind of blankets that sequence of the rest of that impact crater. And it's another example of uh, how, or how we know that it was a meteor impact that created this system. All right, now the uh, next step is going to be uh, going to back out and we're gonna have a look at the Shattercone site. 
Um, so these are along the road on the way to Laurentian University. So if we zoom out a little bit, um, this is the main gate uh, to Laurentian University and it's just along um, the, uh, the road on the way there. Um, one thing, if you do have a chance to go and see, it's well worth having a look at, but uh, please don't break anything um, as this is sort of a one of a kind uh, location. Uh, here we are at uh, Shatter Caron Outcrop uh, near Laurentian University in Sudbury, Ontario. You can see these cone-shaped features in the rock. You can see some of the texture there. That's from a meteor impact that hit here about 1.8 billion years ago. And this is what this meteor impact is what resulted in the uh, Sudbury nickel deposits. And we can see more cones here. Uh, and these happened when the meteor hit and it fra fractured this uh, quartzite and um, these cones point towards the uh, center of the impact. And here's another area nearby where we can see a lot more cones fairly distinctively here. Um, and it's been stained a little bit yellow here, but we can see a series of cones on this outcrop. All right, now we're going to go from the shadow cones and have a look at the uh, Sibiri breccia. Um, now the area where this is um, most easily seen is actually at the Big Nickel, which also has a museum um, called Dynamic Earth. Uh, that is well worth having a look through, especially if you have small kids. And if you've never been underground, there's a chance to take an underground tour there. Um, but it's more in just on the way from the parking lot to the museum, there is nice exposures of the Sudbury impact breccia. And it's an area where sedimentary rocks were impacted. So it's really easy to see um, that these are broken up fragments. And we'll have a look at that in more detail now. We're looking over here at this brecciated rock. So we can see that it's brecciated because that we can see this distinctive layering that was in the original rock and that is now in between these is infilled by um, this uh, unlayered material. Um, so this happened uh, at the base of the Sudbury Basin when the impact occurred um, and it broke up all this rock and then it was welded together making the Sudbury breccia. So here's another big clasp here. And this impact was uh, one of the largest uh, known to have occurred on Earth um, and that we have evidence of anyway. Um, and it is re resulted in the second largest uh, nickel deposit, the Sudbury deposits uh, in Sunbury, Ontario. So this is the broken rock that was then infilled by um, molten rock and in some areas uh, massive sulfide. Uh, in the Sudbury complex in Ontario. So this occurred uh, at the base of the meteor crater uh, when the meteor struck and, and created that impact site. We can see these really angular fractures of the um, host rock that's then infilled by this finer grain material that is the um, melted rock that melted from the meteor impact and then infilled in between all these fractured up rock. Um, so this is, again, evidence used to interpret that a meteor impact is what caused the Sudbury complex and the nickel deposits associated with it. All right, now we're going to have a look at the different ore types um, that we have at Sudbury. Um, but before I do that, I'll just go briefly through how uh, the sulfide solidified here. So these were molten sulfide droplets that were in the melt that was caused due to the uh, impact. Um, so it started out with this uh, is with sulfide liquid. Now, as this was mixed in with all that molten rock, sulfide liquid uh, tends to grab elements like platinum group elements, copper, nickel, uh, and this is what ultimately formed the deposit. Um, and as we cool from fully molten sulfide liquid, we start to precipitate uh, different metals first. So what we get First is we get precipitation of um, iron nickel uh, monosulfides um, and this leaves back a residual liquid uh, melt that is then enriched in copper and platinum group elements. And as we continue 
to decrease the uh, temperature, we start precipitating out uh, from nickel and iron to then more copper and then more PGEs. So as uh, our, our sulfide liquid cools, um, we progressively get more and more copper in the residual liquid. And if this is stuck in one spot, we're going to get just a series of uh, minerals like calcopyrite, pyrotite, and penlandite, and PGs. However, uh, in some areas, the liquid can kind of keep migrating as it cools. And further away in this migration pathway, we get progressively more copper and more PGs. Um, so we'll have a look at these different ore deposits, remembering that the ones that are purely nickel and iron rich um, precipitate first. And as we get progressively more copper, this is a progression of the sulfide melt uh, moving away from that in the initial uh, high nickel grades. Right, we're looking at some massive sulfide ore uh, from the Sudbury complex. This is interesting because it came from essentially the base of the crater. We know this because we can see these fractured bits of um, rock that when the impact happened, it broke up the, the base rock and then later had massive sulfides kind of come in and filling the area between the glass. Now, these tend to be uh, higher nickel and lower copper because the nickel and iron um, solidifies first out of those sulfide melts. And you can tell that there's not a whole lot of like that goldy calcopyrite here. Um, because this is mostly pentlandite and pyrotite. So if I had my magnet, I could stick it on there. Um, so this is um, one of the types of ore we get in the Sudbury complex, and it happens near the base of the crater. All right, we're again looking at a rock from the Sudbury complex. This is uh, largely a norite, so it's a olivine and uh, plagioclase rich rock. Um, this for but what's important here is we see these little dots of sulfide. Um, so these are little droplets of um, molten sulfide, that is what would go and form the ore that couldn't actually get down. So it created what's called disseminated ore. In this case, there's not quite enough of it um, to actually be mineable, but this would occur generally over the massive sulfide ore bottles, bodies in the area. Or an example of these droplets just not making it down to form the massive sulfide that we, we need to be able to mine it. All right, what we're looking at here is high grade copper ore from the Sudbury complex. So what we have is this yellow, this is the calcopyrite, um, and then this purple, which is all of this in here, um, that is boronite. So boronite has uh, more copper in it than calcopyrite from a fair amount. And what this is, is evidence of um, how we get uh, progressively more copper as we get further away um, from the from the center of the crater in Sudbury because the copper-rich minerals um, will stay molten longer than the nickel ones. So you progressively lose the nickel and then you go to progressively more copper as you move away. And this is an example of it. And we've got this massive boronite with the calcopyrite showing that it's gone a ways away and has sort of been refined to be higher in copper. These will also be higher in PGs.